Welcome to Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host, and for the next three weeks, we continue to come to you by the Lake Centipede Region VNA and Hospice. Their mission is to provide health care and hospice services in homes and community settings, fostering continuity of care and enabling people to stay in their homes as long as possible. David Linehan, the Lake Centipede Region Liaison, will join us to describe his work with clients to get the best VNA service possible. Sue Ann Bottomley will join me to tell us about her new publication, New London A to Z. Jean Connolly will give us a rundown of Center for the Arts events coming up. And we'll close with a piece we did last year on the Sutton Meeting House steeple. But first, a few words from the good-minded businesses that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. We all come together and stand together to serve our veterans. We invest in the latest technology. We take the time to train the next generation of doctors and nurses. We work together to make sure we heal their bodies and their minds. This is our mission. More than 300,000 of us working as one, together with families and loved ones. No matter where they live in this country, we'll be there. We stand strong, united. Stand with us in caring for our veterans. Even though our daily lives are different, one fact remains unchanged. Blood is needed every day by patients facing a range of serious illnesses. If you're healthy, please schedule an appointment to donate by visiting redcrossblood.org. I'm Ryan Seacrest. First responders are people who stand for a greater purpose. When you call 911 and ask for help, first responders show up now. Let's show up for the people who show up for us every day and every night. We all know ticks suck blood, but even a tiny tick can make you super sick. When you're outdoors, wear protective clothing and an EPA-registered insect repellent. And remember to check for ticks everywhere. Go to ticksuck.org for more information. Ticksuck.org. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the Renaissance Shop right here in New London. And I'm now joined by David Linehan, who is the liaison for the VNA. Hi, David. Hi, good morning. So I think the first thing to talk about is what is the liaison for the VNA? Right. And of course, if you can't spell liaison, it's hard <laughs> enough to even know what it yes. is. But the way I look at the role is it's sort of the customer service rep but not only for the customers trying to access the office, but the office trying to access the customers. So it's very much a middleman role. Yes. It's, it's just something where you're helping the communication. And sometimes because of that relationship that you've developed somewhere, you might know the super secret backdoor number right. to get that answer ASAP for someone that needs something right now. And you must have a lot of connections too, because it sounds like you need to piece a lot of puzzles together. I'm getting more and more. And, yeah, I, think sure. and I think part of the role is also understanding that I don't know everyone and mm -hmm. don't know everything. So being willing to ask who could help me in right. this scenario and what I've learned, I've only been up in this market about a year and a half now. Okay. What I've learned is it's a very small interconnected area. You're, you're correct. Right. <laughs> so somebody that worked at New London probably has worked at Dartmouth, might very well have worked at Valley. Right. And can help me navigate those things. And they're very willing to help. Very important. Give us a scenario uh, of which uh, you might use your liaison um, role here what is someone or a typical day that you might uh, a scenario you might be working on the best part about my job is there is no typical day that's wonderful Some so people love that. right mm -hmm. so what normally happens and and i won't use names or places or dates sure. but there was something going on recently where we've had a, a family scenario mm. that isn't the best mm. the clinicians very concerned about this patient they've been in and out of the hospital numerous times. So me being aware of this person's name was trying to be on the forefront of getting, hey, dear case manager at local hospital. Sure. Somebody's going to be showing up on your doorstep today. We have concerns about them. Let's talk about them in depth if possible. Got it. That was just the door opener. Right. Then the information came from the clinical team as to what they were really looking for. Sure. And it was my job, or so I felt, 
to give each side as much information as I could and then get out of the way. Right. And, and that's hard for me. I'm <laughs> But I think you do a good job. I don't know. So talk about uh, the liaison role in the hospice department. Sure. So within hospice, and I know Sheila touched on this earlier, was you were chatting with her. Yes. We do this every day. Right. You might do it once, twice, four times in your life, mm -hmm. depending upon who you survived, you know, who your parents and grandparents are. Of course. So a lot of what my role is, gosh, it's almost like a support team. It's reminding families that they're not in this alone, mm. that others are going through this and have gone through this, but letting them know that they are unique because we don't want to ever minimize someone's experience going through hospice. Sure. So letting them know that they, they aren't alone, but they may have unique situation. And that's what he, we as an agency at Lake Sunapee are here to help them with, help them with that path. Right. My role might be as simple as talking to a family member mm -hmm. and saying, you're making the right decision, mm -hmm. right? I'm not a clinician. Right. I'm here to just let them know that you're on the right path. Right. We've got the right team members for you sure. to help you and your loved ones get from point A to point B. Right. Well, because hospice, the word, can be uh, an emotional thing, a scary thing. And so I'm sure you're uh, a, a, a happy face for some people to see in that time to just know that they have resources. Yeah. I, I mean, I think back to what I went through with my father, and it's probably not the right clinical answer to say. Sure. But when my dad and I were talking about hospice and palliative care, I said to him, Dad, if you have two weeks, two months, or two years left to live, how do you want it to look? Mm. And that's what we get to do in hospice, is we let the patients be more involved right. in their day-to-day -day care, yep. as opposed to what their sure. primary care physician and their emergency department wants. And then the VNA is just there to help. We're there to help facilitate those things right. and make their wishes at end of life as smooth as possible, the transition as smooth as possible. Amazing. Well, David, I give you a lot of credit for what you do uh, for every day. That it's it's a somber topic for a lot of people, but um, I think you are a great resource for people. So, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. When we return, Sue Ann Bottomley will introduce us to New London A to Z, her new publication that you will want to have on your coffee table. Stay tuned to find out what this is all about. But first, these words from the good-minded folks that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. We all know ticks suck blood, but not just in the woods. Ticks can be almost anywhere year-round. Even though some are smaller than the head of a pin, they're big trouble. Even a tiny tick can make you super sick. So wear protective clothing and an EPA-registered insect repellent. And when you shower, remember, check for ticks everywhere. If you get a tick, tell an adult and go to ticksuck.org to learn how to remove it properly. Ticks suck, but being outdoors shouldn't. Ticksuck.org. Some say e-cigarettes aren't dangerous. But science shows nicotine can harm teens' developing brains. No matter how they're exposed. Let's do an experiment to find out. Here's a teen who won't be using e-cigarettes. Now we need one willing to risk their brain development. Care to volunteer your kid? For children fighting critical illness, we can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. Every year, thousands of animals are killed by poachers. You can protect them. Join us. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the Renaissance shop here in New London. And I'm so excited to be joined by Sue Ann Bottomley, a local artist. Hi, Sue Ann. Hi there. This is so exciting because you have a book that has been out for a couple years, but a new one specific to New London that we're excited to talk about. But why don't you talk about uh, your love of, of drawing and painting New, new England and spe specifically New London? Uh, okay, well, first of all, I am from New Hampshire. I'm a graduate of UNH. Great. Um, 
I was an art major, and you know, I, I've been an artist my whole life. I love that. Um, after a graduation, I got married and moved away and lived lots of other fine places, <laughs> uh, and didn't come back for a very long time. Uh, while I was away, what I was doing mostly was making etchings and, and woodcuts. I was a printmaker, so oh, I had a, had a big press in my house, so I was mostly in the D.C. area, but also in England. Oh, interesting. Yes. Wow. So um, it was a big press, but it came into pieces. Okay, Three good. pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, what happened was my husband retired, and we decided to move back to New Hampshire. Love it. And I decided to s sell my press. And think, now what? Now what will I do? <laughs> right. What will I do? So while I was thinking about that, I decided to explore New Hampshire. I hadn't been there, you know, for decades. So I got in my car and drove around. Love and um, after I'd drawn about 19 different towns, I thought, I should draw them all. How many are there so anyway? Yeah, how many <laughs> are there? 234. Wow. Yeah. And you went to every single one? I went to every single one, wow. got out of the car. <laughs> so drove far. Actually, I drove, usually I would, usually had no uh, preconceived idea what I was going to draw okay. when I got there because that's and, just more fun that way. And you'd find right? something that you liked yes, in the town. Something that appealed to me. Sure. So, but I often would drive into town one way, stop, turn around, go the other way, crossroads, you know, yep, and then sure. eventually park the car and walk around. Interesting. So this book is a compilation of all of those drawings? It is. Wow. But it wasn't my plan at the beginning, but you know oh. how these things evolve. Right. <laughs> um, I thought, this would make a good book. Wonderful. Then the next thought was, I don't know how to do that. Sure. <laughs> so sure. As, so I was, as I was drawing all these uh, towns, and when I say towns, I mean cities, too. Um, I drew it. I would ask people, "Do you know how to make a book?" Wow! Right. <laughs> Finally, someone said, "I do. I know how to make a book." And now you're good at making books. Yes. So yes. tell us about your new one, A to Z New London, which is really exciting to talk about all of the, you know, new parts of New London on Main Street. It is all about New London, indeed, and some of the places are actually off Main Street a little bit. Okay. But um, it was suggested to me that New London needed this book, that needed a a book like this. Of, so. Um, Last summer, I just got down to it from about April to September. I went around town and drew all sorts of things, and there's 91 paintings in here. Wow. And um, they all are with it through the alphabet. You found something are. for each letter. I did, and um, some of the, actually 10 of them I, I have used before. Okay. But the rest I, are new. The rest are new, and there's animal photos in here for, to appeal to children, but it's really made for everybody to enjoy. Well, and, a good and, coffee table book, and, too. And it's another one of my kind of interactive books where you need to take the book with you, walk around, and find these places. That's kind of fun. And where can people purchase this book? Morgan Hill Bookstore, Artisans, and the shop at the college. That's so wonderful. Well, it's exciting to see all the different things. And I'm impressed that you found something for each letter in New London, which couldn't have been uh, the easiest task. So that's wonderful. Oh, there's, Multiple choices for each letter, actually. <laughs> Except for maybe X and some of the harder ones. And Z. Yes, yes. yes. Well, Sue Ann Bottomley, local artist and new book, A to Z New London, thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you. When we return, Jean Connolly from the Center for the Arts will bring us up to speed on upcoming arts events in the Lake Sunapee region. But first, these words from the good folks that make our communities the great places they are, the businesses that support us, and the organizations you use and love. At Wounded Warrior Project, while we all deal with the effects of COVID-19, our greatest concern is for the health and safety of our nation's wounded heroes, especially those who are at increased risk due to their service to our nation and those who are even now more isolated. We are connecting with warriors and families by adapting our free life-changing programs, including increased phone and video support and online services. The need has never been greater and we've never been more committed. Please support warriors today for children fighting critical illness, we can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. 
all know ticks suck blood, but not just in the woods. Ticks can be almost anywhere year round. Even though some are smaller than the head of a pin, they're big trouble. Even a tiny tick can make you super sick. So wear protective clothing and an EPA registered insect repellent. And when you shower, remember, check for ticks everywhere. If you get a tick, tell an adult and go to ticksuck.org to learn how to remove it properly. Ticks suck, but being outdoors shouldn't. Ticksuck.org. Even though our daily lives are different, one fact remains unchanged. Blood is needed every day by patients facing a range of serious illnesses. If you're healthy, please schedule an appointment to donate by visiting redcrossblood.org. Welcome back. I'm Abby Peel, your Yankee Chronicle host. We have a first Friday coming up on April 1st. Let's hear from Jean Connolly about the other Center for the Arts happenings coming up. Hi, Jean. Thanks, Abby. Um, I'm delighted to tell you about all of the events coming up in April. Did you know that April is National Poetry Month? And with that in mind, we have some exciting events coming up. April 1st at the Newbury Town Hall Community Meeting Room at 5.30, the Literary Arts Guild of the Center for the Arts is hosting their annual poetry competition and reading. The winners of this year's annual contest with the theme Farming will be reading their poetry. These were judged by poet Betsy Snyder, who will also be reading her works. The entire event is going to be sign language interpreted as well. So it's a wonderful event where you listen to the poetry and you get to see the poems come alive visually through sign language interpretation. The judge, Betsy Snyder, you may know, is a uh, well-published poet who has had many books in um, poetry and also been published in many journals, and she's the past winner of the Blue Light Press Award and a finalist for the New Hampshire Literary Awards of Poetry. This event is followed by April 7th event at the Mount Kearsarge Indian Museum. This event will be at six o'clock and will be an evening of poetry and discussion of Native American artifacts. This is to kick off the publication Diversity is Beauty, which was the last publication of the Literary Arts Guild. It's a fabulous, beautiful collection of poetry which is available to buy at any bookstore and also online. This will be an evening of the poets who contributed to that wonderful book and also a chance to see the artifacts that inspired the poetry. This effort was a collaboration between the Mount Kearsarge Indian Museum, which is a fabulous place to visit. If you've not been there recently, please do stop in. And on April 19th, we digress a bit from poetry to bring you a Tapestry Tuesday event. This is our new series of cultural events which are held at the New London Inn on the third Tuesday of each month. And on April 19th, we bring you Charlie Freiberg. He is a commercial photographer from Wilmot who has been doing historical preservation photo photography for the last 20 years. His photographs can be seen at the Library of Congress and in the State Archives. This night, he is going to share with us the hidden treasures of the Northern Rail Trail. It will be a wonderful evening hearing him speak about these uh, hidden gems uh, in our midst and to see the photographs that he has collected along the way. At the New London Inn, you have, it's a ver very lovely setting, it's a casual setting, and you'll be able to uh, purchase food and beverage before the event, and also, of course, have dinner at this wonderful restaurant. Reservations can be made for this event by contacting us by phone or by email. And more information, of course, is on our website. And just a reminder, if you have not been to the exhibit at the Davidow Center for Art and Design at Colby Sawyer College featuring Richard Haynes, please stop in. He has wonderful artwork, very inspirational, and it will be through the end of April. And also, please do stop in at our micro galleries. The members show is still hanging at Bar Harbor Bank and Trust on Main Street and the New London Inn. 
Blue Loon Bakery also has artwork by Penny Koberger. Tate Will Gallery always has a great variety of artwork. And Prospect Hill in Sunapee offers a huge variety of very talented local and regional artists. So you should stop in there too. And just a reminder, please stay up to date by visiting our website. It has all the recent exhibits, shows, performances, poetry readings, and of course the, the latest COVID restrictions. Thanks, Jean. You can't complain that there's nothing to do in our area. When we return, Andy and Dorothy Jeffrey will give us a look at the steeple removal at the Sutton Meeting House. But first, let's visit a few of the community-minded businesses that support your Yankee Chronicle. ticks suck blood, but even a tiny tick can make you super sick. When you're outdoors, wear protective clothing and an EPA-registered insect repellent. And remember to check for ticks everywhere. Go to TickSuck.org for more information. TickSuck.org Every year, thousands of animals are killed by poachers. You can protect them. Join us. We all come together and stand together to serve our veterans. We invest in the latest technology. We take the time to train the next generation of doctors and nurses. We work together to make sure we heal their bodies and their minds. This is our mission. More than 300,000 of us working as one, together with families and loved ones. No matter where they live in this country, we'll be there. We stand strong, united. Stand with us in caring for our veterans. Even though our daily lives are different, one fact remains unchanged. Blood is needed every day by patients facing a range of serious illnesses. If you're healthy, please schedule an appointment to donate by visiting redcrossblood.org. I'm Ryan Seacrest. First responders are people who stand for a greater purpose. When you call 911 and ask for help, first responders show up now. Let's show up for the people who show up for us every day and every night. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host. Last year, we had a chance to visit the renovation process at the Sutton Meeting House and learn more about what's going on there. Andy and Dorothy, tell us more. Well, today's the day we're lifting uh, the top third portion of the steeple of the Meeting House off its perch and bringing it down to the ground where we can um, restore it. The, project that we're working on is restoring the entire Meeting House steeple and we're privileged to have been awarded an LCHIP grant to help us finance this and this is roughly the midpoint of the operation. We've um, taken everything off that we can and now we're removing the top third and are going to put it down just over yonder. Well LCHIP is a New Hampshire program that's funded by various um, fees that help support the preservation of historic buildings throughout the state. And two years ago, um, the Sutton Historical Society applied for and won an LCHIP grant to restore the tower on the um, South Meeting House here. And we're just finally getting around to actually activating the project because it was a little delayed because of the pandemic and we started raising money during the period of COVID, which is not the best time to raise money. And we, they, made it work. <laughs> the, 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 the board and the contributors. And we, I think we've had about 150 people contribute to this. This building was built in 1839 on the site of the original meeting house that was built in 1798. Uh, meeting houses were our, and still are a traditional gathering that often served as churches in New Hampshire. What's unique about this structure is that it's been essentially not altered since it was put up in 1839. This building and much of the surrounding area here on the South Sutton Common is much the same way it was when this building was first erected 150 years ago. Under the guidance of Burlington Builders, who um, was our contractor, we had 
uh, seven uh, custom blades created so that the uh, siding and the trim would match identically to the siding and trim that is being restored. Well, the Sutton Historical Society is um, an organization that's here in town to help preserve and maintain the history of the town of Sutton, which is very rich, as you can tell by looking around, not just the buildings and structures, but also um, the people and the culture and it's very important to the town to maintain these aspects. In fact, it's a big part of the town's master plan. Um, and so the Historical Society's mission is to make sure that we are fulfilling those desires of the town to keep our culture and our connect from the past to the future. And we'd like to have future generations be able to see and appreciate part of our past. Um, and to that end, we We've been fundraising to make sure that we could accomplish these projects because it's unique that the Sutton Historical Society owns several historical buildings in this town. Ordinarily, the towns own them, and the Historical Society is the agent of the town and just maintains them or runs programs in them or uses them as a museum. We own these buildings and we're responsible for making sure that they are maintained appropriately. And accordingly, one of the criteria for the LCHIP program isn't just to fund the project to put the band-aid on the building. They want you to put a restoration fund together so that you can be responsible for taking care of the maintenance of these wonderful properties moving on into the future. But just behind the meeting house is the original one-room schoolhouse that stayed here and the next project down the pipeline is restoring the roof of the schoolhouse so yeah, it, that's it, what the restoration funds about is being able to not just handle what's coming on today but to have the money to be able to deal with what's coming down the road yeah it's a never-ending project of maintaining these buildings in perpetuity so although we've succeeded in making our recent fundraising goal to restore the meeting house and establish a fund to help keep it go forward we are continually um, honored to have people contribute and help us maintain these beautiful structures throughout, throughout the future. Um, and it's particularly important because as a small private volunteer organization, we don't have deep pockets and we rely on the generosity of our donors in our community. Well, and just in the past week, we've had um, volunteers that range from students from the Kearsage school system, graduates from the Kearsage uh, school system, and just citizens help um, pitch in to paint all the siding that's going to be replacing this. So it's not just been people's financial contribution, but they put in their own sweat equity as well. Right. And we'd like to say that so has our, our main contractor, Nate Burrington and Burrington Builders. He has donated a lot of his time with his family in helping with the painting or we had a tree that needed to be removed. So it, this isn't just about raising finances. It's also about sweat equity and volunteers, and we appreciate both. We'd welcome you to go to our website where you can learn how to help out our situation and also to um, see the progress of our efforts and to learn more about some of the other programs we're offering. Later on this summer, we're going to try to give back to our generous donors and we've got an exciting new plan for Sutton Old Home Day 2021. So stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks, Dorothy and Andy. Dorothy would like you to know that they have received a second LCHIP grant with plans to complete the project this year. They are soliciting donations to raise the matching funds for the new grant and the completion of the Meeting House project. Next up for them is the old schoolhouse. They are busy. Next week, we'll be back here at the Renaissance Shop with Joanne Hughes, one of the founders of this wonderful place to hear what is new. Donna Mayhar will give us a preview of this year's Newport Dancing with the Stars. Don't miss our Game of the Week replay. This week will feature the Kearsarge football team traveling to take on Stevens. All our games replay at 12 noon and 5 p.m. Sunday and Monday or on demand anytime at YCNnow.com. Check out other outside television programs of original shows featuring the most exciting extreme sports from rock climbing, biking, water sports, and of course, skiing. Check out our new home on a new region-wide cable channel being hosted by NCTV in Newport and programmed throughout the Kearsarge Lake Sunapee region. YCN will continue to provide regional public affairs, programming, sports, and our Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel. Join us again next week as we are here again presented by the Lake Sunapee Region, VNA and Hospice at the same time for another edition of Yankee Chronicle. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>